In this video, I'm going to show you how to paint some of the Battlefield Manufactorum uh, scenery from Games Workshop for Warhammer 40,000. In almost all miniature war games, there's a crucial part of the game playing, and that is scenery. Not only does this help make the table look more alive and a bit more realistic, but normally they have quite a vital role in the actual gameplay. Now when you're first starting out, you're more likely to be spending your money on the actual miniatures rather than the scenery. After all, we can make do with piles of books and cans of baked beans for make-do little towers. But when you've got enough miniatures and that money of yours is burning a hole in your pocket, the next logical step is to start buying some terrain, and that's what I did recently. A couple of months back I bought enough scenery from the Battlezone Manufactorum range uh, from Games Workshop to supply me with a full table's worth of terrain. I also have some Orc scenery that I got from the uh, Speed Freaks box set and the Mech Boy box as well. So th there's a bit of a variety in my terrain. In this video I'm going to be showing you how to paint the Battlezone Manufactorum terrain in a sandy kind of colour scheme. So enough of the chit chat, let's dive straight into it. When it came to priming this terrain, I wanted to help myself out. I knew it was going to be a fairly sandy theme that I wanted to go for, so I decided to spray all of it black to begin with. And then where I'd normally do a zenith or prime of white over the top, which is where you spray your lighter paint from above, I didn't use white this time. Instead, I used Citadel's Zandri Dust. This means that I'm getting my base coat colour on straight away and I'm doing it in a way that produces some highlights for me right off the bat. Now painting these pieces of terrain is really quite easy and I'm going to be using Screaming Skull as my first paint and applying it with a large dry brush. We're going to make sure to apply the paint in a downwards motion focusing on the top areas of each piece of terrain. Due to these pieces of terrain being really highly detailed it's going to be catching on a lot of the raised areas which is exactly what we want from the dry brush. I then apply a second highlight in the exact same way, but this time using Pallid Witch Flesh, which is the near on white colour. When applying the second highlight, you want to be a bit more selective, really focusing on the tippy toppy areas and not going that far down the wall. Now, as you can see, doing these two highlights has taken the Zenithal Primed base coat that we had with the Zandra Dust and elevated it a little bit more, going from really dark to really quite light and catching all the details in the process. The next thing I'm going to do is select some of the metallic areas that I want to paint with a metallic paint and that's going to be Lead Belcher. Now I'm honestly not going to be that careful with it, I'm just going to slap it on because I'm trying to get this done quickly. I've got a game coming up, I want to play so just whack it on all the areas you want. For me that includes the large tank on the side of the main buildings uh, the circle round the skull, and any particularly large pipes. The second metallic colour I'm going to be using is Brass Scorpion. And I'm going to apply this to the mesh bits inside the windows, the door, and half of the skull in the circle thing on the wall. The main reason I'm using a different metallic is just to break it up a little bit. If it's all the same colour, it's going to look a bit too same. Now the next thing I'm going to do is apply a heavy wash of Agrax Earthshade or whatever brown wash you want. Or alternatively you could use an entirely different wash. We're going for a sandy look here so you could even use a yellowy based wash like Sarah from Sepia or Icon of Flesh Aid if you wanted. Once all of that is dry I'm going to use Rune Fang Steel to apply a highlight to the metallics and once again I'm just going to be dry brushing this on. You don't want to elevate these pieces too much in terms of a paint job because you don't want to distract from your beautifully painted miniatures when on the table. These are scenery, they're meant to blend into the background whilst telling a story that doesn't distract from your hours worth of work on the little people. Now you could easily leave it here, but just as a finishing touch, I'm going to rip off a tiny bit of sponge and dab it in some Rhinox hide. And then with this, I'm going to dab it around all the broken areas of the scenery. So that's along the top where it's clear that the upper floor has been smashed to pieces or on the broken areas of the wall. I'm also going to apply this around the bottom as well. 
I'm doing this to replicate a chipped paint sort of effect, which would obviously happen throughout wars and stuff. So there we go, a nice easy way to make these Battlezone Manufactorum pieces look quite nice with very little effort. If you like this video please make sure to give it a thumbs up and maybe hit that subscribe button I would love to have you join the little group of subscribers that I'm starting to develop we've got some lovely people here also leave a comment down below if you want to see me paint that orc terrain that I mentioned previously but uh, next the next video I'm going to be making is how I came up with a color scheme for a necron that I've been wanting to do for a while if you'd like to support this channel even more above liking and commenting and all that kind of stuff, then follow some of the links in the description. There are links to my social media platforms and there's also a link to my Patreon where you can contribute around £2 a month and get behind the scenes access and early access to videos. And it just helps support this channel and allows me to do this more, I suppose. <laughs> So thank you for watching, thank you for liking, commenting, subscribing, all of that goodness, and I will see you later.